December 2001. Argentina was immersed in the deepest social crisis of the decade. Statistics show that a baby died every 48 minutes. 40% of the population lived below the poverty line. Three million people were new poor. This figure increased by more than 8,000 people each day. People took to the streets. Supermarkets were looted. Middle-class Argentines joined the protests. Their fury was focused on the banks, which closed their doors on them, but helped companies send their money abroad. Financial institutions sent $40 billion abroad in one night. People's money was trapped in bank deposits and could not be withdrawn. In response to popular demonstrations, police repression was fierce. More than 30 people died. Dozens were seriously wounded and hundreds of people were prosecuted in courts across the country. How did the country come to this? From the 70s onwards, liberal economic policies were imposed on Argentina. The recommendations of international financial institutions, the IFIs, provided the political and economic grounds for these economic changes. During the 90s, President Carlos Menem and economy minister Domingo Cavallo became star pupils in that school. They decided that one Argentine peso would be equivalent to one US dollar. They set the payment of the external debt as the primary goal of their administration. How would this goal be achieved? The government decided that one way was through the reallocation of a portion of tax revenues previously assigned to education, health, and other basic services. Juan Manuel's daughter has been hospitalized in a public institution. He is witness to the consequences of that policy. Ya te digo, la atención es eh, es genial, pero por la gente que trabaja. Si es por las autoridades en general, eh, esto se va hundiendo. Es así. Como está también el, el tema, yo soy docente y el tema de la docencia es lo mismo, no hay ningún tipo de inversión edilicia. Acá vos entras al edificio y hay goteras por todos lados, llueva o no. De hecho hay carteles que dicen, 50 millones de pesos le debe el gobierno al hospital. Y, y se nota. It is clear that the population did not derive any benefit from these policies, but someone surely did. Just as an example, in 2000, Argentina had to pay $27 million in interest to foreign creditors on a $26 million loan granted by the IMF. This meant more poverty, more hunger, more unemployment, and not one single dollar in return. That is what you might call to strike a good deal. Argentina now is uh, playing in the world's first class league. Uh, of the strong and uh, uh, economies, uh, Argentina has made a formidable uh, progress uh, towards the uh, in-depth modernization of its uh, uh, economic structures, of its economy in general. It, ha it has got rid of inflation and it has a f uh, availed itself with uh, a currency which is as good as the dollar. Part of that formidable progress was the privatization of public utility companies, which was also recommended by the IFIs. Among other things, the government stripped the companies of their assets to then sell those companies at low prices. Take the case of the state-owned telephone company. As a result of privatization, rates increased by around 700%. Working conditions became precarious. There were massive layoffs of employees. This is how things are. For the IMF plan to work, the only thing that is needed is a flexible labor force, willing to submit to the needs and demands of capital. Among the difficult problems you must uh, uh, tackle is the necessity of convincing uh, labor unions that in order to reduce unemployment, which is above 17% still in Argentina, you must accept to reduce the privileges of those who have a job to 
be able to create more jobs for those who have no jobs. In Argentina, this was known as the labor reform, a transformation of the labor market through laws that restricted workers' rights, the benefits and privileges that they had won through self-organization. Afterwards, precarious and informal jobs grew, outsourcing and unemployment escalated, and the bargaining power of unions decreased. A flexible market is an entry door to transnational capital and to multinational companies. The best investment guarantee for these companies is the absence of an effective regulation. An instance of outsourcing was that of the Spanish newspaper El País. Copies were printed by a printing company with serious problems about the wages paid. A razón de 7 pesos por día veníamos ganando y teníamos casi 5 pesos de, de viaje nada más. O sea que veníamos a gastar plata, no veníamos a ganar el, el pan que, te, que nos corresponde a cada uno de los compañeros que tenían que llegar a la casa, no, no alcanzaba a cubrir eso. Until the day when the workers said enough is enough. Cuando nosotros decidimos no sacar el diario, ellos lo querían hacer. Entonces nosotros qué hicimos? Agarramos, le cortamos el papel, nos paramos adelante en la máquina y no se hace el diario y no se hizo el diario. After having gone bankrupt, Cooperativa Gráfica Patricios today is a factory managed by its own workers. Cases like this multiplied across the country, as with Cristal Avellaneda, a manufacturing plant that was slowly stripped of its assets by the owners until it was pushed to bankruptcy. Today, this plant is also managed by its own workers. Así que las circunstancias fueron las que nos reagruparon, la necesidad, me parece. Si llegamos a a donde estamos fue porque el modelo neoliberal triunfó. No, nos hemos visto obligados a tener que tomar una fábrica en nuestras manos. Entonces, ¿qué nos queda a los laburantes? ¿Qué nos queda a los que vamos a dar clase y nos encontramos con que los pibes no comen y que se te desmayan a media mañana? o que se le tienen todos los dientes estropeados a los 11, 12 años, o con los padres de esos pibes que los ven mendigar y juntar cartones cuando hacía 7, 8 años atrás tenía un auto. ¿Qué nos queda? Lidia worked at a factory as a skilled shoemaker, but the company closed and she lost her job. Her husband worked 8 years for the state-owned telephone company, and after privatization, he was laid off. Ese tiempo que yo estaba trabajando, mi marido también estaba trabajando, teníamos más que mal, no lo faltaba nada. Y, y adaptarme a después a, a, a note que ya me iba faltando, es como que, que sufrís. Es agachar la cabeza. Lidia es una de las miles de cardboard collecting women que se han multiplicado en el país después de la crisis. ¿Cuántos, cuántos cartoneros? Pero ese tren blanco, o entras, hay mucha gente que tiene todos sus vicios. ¿Y de qué les vale? IMF recipes ended in a social explosion and a deep crisis. This happened not only in Argentina, but also in many other countries. The IFIs and the governments have made many mistakes. The international financial institutions enforce their rules and decisions by means of the penalties and conditions they impose on countries in need of financial assistance. Their recommendations lead globalization exclusively in the direction of business interests. This globalization destroyed decent jobs and increased poverty. It produces wealth for the very few. It harms many people. To counteract the power of the IFIs and have international standards respected, a counterpower must be created, the power of workers. Democratic unions are the most important and effective means to protect the rights and standard of living of workers throughout the world. In the age of global institutions, global companies, and a global economy, workers need global unions. As a global union, Union Network International, UNI, can make workers stronger. It can ensure respect for international standards for workers' rights, it can fight against global exploitation and poverty. In uni, together, we can do it.